Hi, welcome to The Flow State presented by The Bluntness. I'm your host, Taylor, coming to you from New York City. And today we have a very special guest with us. Ty Richards is a New York native and the founder and creative director at Rage and Release, a cannabis lifestyle brand focused on fitness, wellness, cannabis, and New York's way of approaching the industry. With a history in the fitness and modeling industries, Ty has long been dedicated to holistic wellness, which he continues to promote through Rage and Release events and educational opportunities. Ty, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, can you please let us know where you're coming from? Peace, peace. Pleasure to be here. I'm coming from Brooklyn, a little bit of everywhere in Brooklyn, um, a little bit of New York. Uh, so I represent quite a, quite a bit of communities. Very nice. Um, all right. And can you just talk us through a little bit how you got your start into the industry and how you came um, to where you are today? Um, so I started modeling very young. I um, started when I was around like 17, 18 years old. And um, that led me into a variety of opportunities um, in the model world and also in the, on the fitness side of modeling as well, too. So um, my biggest uh, breaks were working with Nike. I was with Nike for seven years. Um, part of working with them, I helped develop their e-commerce division, which is uh, which was a, a very pivotal uh, learning moment for me because I got to learn a lot about advertisement. You know what I'm saying? The power of you in, in the sense of your marketability and all those different things. And I uh, really had the opportunity to gauge what I wanted to do along the way as I um, progressed as an entrepreneur, um, because you are an entrepreneur when you are a model. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. So there are a lot of different things that comes with that. So you have to learn taxes. You have to learn, you know, how to, again, a model market yourself and how to present yourself in these situations. So it does groom you for a lot of the things that come your way when you start to jump over to the business aspect of things and running things for yourself. Um, so being in uh, the, the model industry, uh, you, I've come in contact with a variety of people that are in cannabis as well, too. And, um, you know, having conversations from young about cannabis and being around people who actually like really love uh, cannabis and represent it in a way that was that was always very unique to me um, has put me in positions to now work in the field the way I do now, because um, my passion is derived from not only using it on a uh, sport and spiritual level, but also on a um, intellectual level as well, too. Um, I think that uh, the conversation around cannabis has always been a lengthy one. And I think that, uh, you know, I think we need to help simplify that for the, for, for the people that don't really understand what cannabis is. So even in the model industry or many other industries, I've learned that a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they don't really have a care and, and respect for the knowledge of the plant itself, but they're just, in, in, you know, indulging it. So I think that um, that's what really led me to being in the industry the way that I am now is more to help people um, understand how cannabis has been able to help um, a variety of people, whether it's eight, uh, people with HIV and AIDS uh, well, or cancer patients, or it's been able to help, uh, you know, skincare, you know what I'm saying? This, you know, all kinds of degenerative uh, diseases out there that cannabis has been able to help with ease the process of people's bodies going through these things. So I think uh, helping people generally understand that is what allowed me to, you know, really move into the industry the way I have. Yeah, yeah, no, those are all um, great points and definitely important to consider cannabis from a, from a more well-rounded perspective now that it's part of the conversation more. Um, so can you talk us through Rage and Release specifically? Uh, what does Rage and Release do? Um, and kind of what are some current missions you might be working on? Right now, um, what we're working on, I'll start there first. Uh, what we're working on is um, making our community more functional. And what that means is you are capable to meet the task that your life demands of you. And what that entails is our programming is all about the trinity mind body and soul so we cater to that and we also cater to the senses where our our uh events are all about revitalizing um people and whether it's spiritually or physically um using cannabis using uh fitness um using spirituality as well too in a sense of our meditation so we host sound baths we we host uh, a variety of uh, meditations as well too breath work 
Um, we work with uh, holistic care as well to really bring the fullness of the programming together in a sense of helping people learn how to use herbs, spices, um, just using nature to your benefit in your everyday lifestyle. Um, we also host uh, supper clubs as well, um, where we provide um, unusual food experiences. Like our most recent one was a Filipino Dominican um, clash. And these uh, food clashes derive from um, the history of food and how the world has been shaped by food in a sense of you have the quote unquote conquerors is what I like to call them. The, all these guys that have gone around the world and left their mark. So when you look at the Spaniards, they went to, they were in the Philippines, but they were also in the Dominican Republic. So they have inf influenced those cultures. So we like to use history as a, as a playground when it comes to food and really flipping that and creating these plant-based, um, plant-based experiences because you know, me and my business partner, we love food. Kenesha White is her name. And uh, we really take food uh, pretty seriously when it comes to um, just the overall experience. And we really try to cater to bring fine dining in in, in a way where it's uh, refreshing and um, how can I say, not aggressive. Cause I feel like the vegan and vegetarian culture has been rather aggressive. And I feel like a lot of people haven't really been able to find their way in it because, you know, it, it, if you don't understand food, it's hard to break into that. But um, outside of that, we again making our community more functional, making anybody that comes into our into our midst um, better, and just overall just more conscious uh, beings. Um, Raise and release was uh, created um, in 2015. Um, I was actually a one man show when I first started it, so my goal was to provide a unique fitness experience that made everybody feel that they could come in and just be themselves. Um, inclusivity was always the main focus, but um, using cannabis and running to um, build community and to build connections amongst people that probably would have never really spoken before, um, but also uh, creating a space for black and, br for black and brown people to uh, enjoy running as well too, because running is a kind of like a, a foreign language when it comes to the black community, uh, long distance running that is track and field is always going to be a thing because, you know, football and stuff like that. But the allure of long distance running has never really, um, been a thing, um, but is a big part of our history. So I think, um, going back to again, history, as far as like, you want to talk about black people running in America, it's been going on since slavery. So like, this is something I think is, um, is actually ancestral more than it is just a, a physical practice. So keeping, um, all of this, you know, keeping all these different uh, perspectives in mind and wrapping it into one is, was always the goal so that we can not only pay homage to the past so that we know where we're coming from, but we also know where we're going. Um, so I wrap a lot of culture and tradition into the fabric of what Rage and Release is overall so that people can, uh, how can I say, learn from one another and then also learn from the past because if we're not learning from the past, then I don't know what's going on with the future. So again, all of the practices within Rage and Release is to um, cultivate conscious beings. Um, I'm going to say conscious because, you know, mindfulness has been such a... Uh, such a hyped up word when it's just like in reality, like mindfulness and everything else about that in this, in the sense of spirituality, in the sense of being better people, these things should be normal. They, these, these shouldn't even be categories. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think the first thing that should come to mind is functional conscious beings. And I think that's one of the main things that I've also um, been very focused on because me, myself, my upbringing has been rather rough. So I've had to, cultivate different practices to get to where I am now. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I definitely agree that we're at a point where we need to kind of consider the holistic elements and not just cannabis, but just a, a healthy overall uh, happy lifestyle. So mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. Um, as far as Rage and Release events, I know that they're currently taking place in New York. Um, right. have, they, have they taken place in any other location or do you have plans to expand beyond New York? Yeah, so our goal next year is to be able to get enough funding to be able to move around and actually um, provide these experiences in um, uh, certain major cities. Um, the, the list for certain cities uh, are pretty unique because I feel like when it comes to fitness, when it comes to cannabis, when it comes to just the overall like demographic that people try to reach, there's certain cities, there's certain cities that, that, aren't, re that aren't reached and aren't touched. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'll take some. 
yeah. But um, yeah, I think that um, you know, having the right funding, having the right partnership, stuff like that, really makes our experiences that much better. And that's what it really is about: is navigating those partnerships. Also, again, for ourselves, making sure that you know we're taking care of ourselves on the back end so that we necessarily don't have to focus on, you know, partnership and stuff like that. Because I think our community, I think having the right communities in, in, in the right cities, it definitely help us be uh, as independent as we want to be, but we definitely want to work with the right people. Yeah, yeah, makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. um, all right, amazing. So we are now going to move into the uh, 10 minute flash question section. So how okay. this works, I've got 10 questions for you um, related to cannabis, and you'll have 60 seconds to answer each one. Um, all right, so if you're ready, I'll go ahead and fire away. Okay, uh, what is one cannabis product you can't live without? Um, shoot, I'm going to have to say, I'm definitely going to have to say papers. I love a good joint. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Um, what about, uh, what advice would you have for someone who uh, wants to start advertising their cannabis brand? I think one of the things that anybody should do is be bold and also be realistic about their approach and also have a strong message. I think the message is more important than the flower itself. I think making sure that people understand what your intentions are with providing, you know, said product. I think that's, that's really, really, really important because um, you don't want to create a culture that's just based off of uh, just smoking. And I think that right there is the biggest problem in cannabis, cannabis itself is the fact that everybody just has this idea of stoners being lazy and, you know, whatever the perception is, that old school perception. And I think marketing wise, I think it's important that we that we have a strong message as cannabis uh cannabis influence as well because you're not just you're not just having a brand you're you're influencing a, a culture of what your brand represents you know yeah absolutely. absolutely nice all right um what about your thoughts on cannabis during work hours i think cannabis during work hours is absolutely fine for experienced stoners i think if you are well seasoned with how you know your body reacts to whatever it is that you're smoking i think that's vital to have a routine um, but for anybody that's just getting into it or like, you know, you're just mildly seasoned, I think you should e ease into it or just don't do it at all because not everybody's capable of being, um, high and productive. Right. Yeah. Important to know your limit. Absolutely. All right. Um, what about the most surprising thing that you found when you started working in the cannabis industry? Um, I think. One of the most surprising things for me personally, I would have to say learning that not everybody cares about the product the same. And I, and I think that's something I stress about all the time is um, when you learn about these facilities that I have, these nasty practices, or you, you find out these, whatever growers are using, whatever, you know, pesticides and things like that. I think that right there kind of was uh, nerve wracking for me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what about the first thing you would tell someone who is afraid of cannabis, has never tried it before? Uh, find what you need because there are so many compounds to cannabis that it doesn't necessarily have to be a THC experience right off the back. Um, I think, you know, trying CBD and, you know, even, you know, CBG, depending on what you, what, it all depends on what your activity, your activities are and what your, what you what benefits you're looking for. And I think understanding that as well, too, I think um, have a, having a clear cut understanding of what cannabis is overall before actually jumping into, you know, using it, I think is, is most, most vital. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Education is key. Yeah. Um, what about the first advice you would give to someone who wants to start working in the industry, but doesn't know how to get started? First, find what your passion is. Uh, you know, I think that's what anything, find what your passion is with the flower and then, you know, work on that. You know what I'm saying? What it is that you're trying to, um, what, it, what, what your, find what your expertise would be. Um, I think there's so many, um, amazing jobs right now in the cannabis field that I think that there's room for so much growth, whether you're a grower, whether 
you know, you're the person that's that's cutting the buds. I think like there's just there's an importance to each part of it. And I think that somebody could find some real purpose in in cultivating. I think everybody knows that having a green thumb, green thumb does something to somebody. And I think that, um, you know, again, finding what it is that you that you're most passionate about and driving it home and really being relentless within that, because um, I think the more uh, confident you are now in the cannabis industry, I think the better it is because um, when you come with the knowledge and you back it up and you, and you handle things the way that it should, I think there's room for, for anybody who's willing to do the groundwork. Right. Nice. All right. Um, what about your uh, cannabis media? Do you have a favorite blog, podcast, um, influencer, anything like that? At the moment, um, I love Can Occlusive. Um, and I hate to be, you know, sound generic, whatever case may be when in a, in a you know, situation like this, but like, I just love what, what they've been able to um, put together for the overall, uh, for the overall culture when it comes to um, black and brown folk within the industry. And, you know, making sure that nobody is left behind within this um, uh, gold rush. Um, I think that's been the biggest part about this this whole entire journey of cannabis right now is the realization is making sure that everybody is equally um, able to get their piece of the pie and I think that um, these everybody's doing a great job right now in the sense of like their own unique market and their in unique niche within cannabis and I think everybody has their role but Right now, I think, uh, like, again, can inclusive and other brands that represent that culture of inclusivity and making sure everybody is, um, is well taken care of, I think is, is one of the best platforms you can have right now. Absolutely. Um, what about a personal cannabis hero? Do you have anyone today or in, in the past that you really look up to in the industry? Um, I, have a, I have a bunch of people. I wouldn't even say in the industry per se, but I would just say like, uh, like athletes, like, for instance, Ricky Williams. Um, I love Ricky Williams um, from when I was young. And I remember when um, he went on, on his hiatus and um, I remember how they like were talking about his cannabis use. They just like demonized it and they just made it seem like he was out of his mind for, you know, for using it and the way he used it. And it was for, for his mental health. And I was one of the first like cases that really opened up my mind to how cannabis is just, you know, it just isn't, it just isn't marketed properly. And I think that, you know, Rastafarian culture as well, too, is just like the way they've been able to um, cultivate this amazing culture around cannabis, but yet it all has been denied. And now all of a sudden, you know, you see a full 360 where, you know, people like Ricky Williams and, you know, Michael Phelps and Mike Tyson and, you know, new, Mike Tyson is actually one of my favorites right now as well, too. I have to mention Mike. Mike is freaking amazing what he's been able to do for his career as well, too. And then you have, um, you know, Al Harrington and what he's been able to do over there with Viola. And then um, I always, I'm always going to look up to Burner. I love Burner. I love what he's been able to do for the overall culture and, and um, how he's actually like, um, you know, providing quality product. Uh, uh, but yeah, there's there's a variety of people in the industry that I'm just like I'm amazed by. Um, there's a few cannabis athletes that I've been that I've been uh, paying attention to right now. Um, I only know them by Instagram names, so I'm not going to mention them at the moment. But um, <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a great deal of people that I admire within cannabis that I'm just like, man, I would love to be able to work with them um, sooner than later. Yeah, people who are kind of erasing that stereotype of the lazy stoner in real time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Like Wiz Khalifa too, man. Like yeah. Wiz Khalifa, you know what I'm saying? Him, you know, being uh, a, a, an artist, rap artist, and then transitioning to, you know, kickboxing, but yet still still smoking and still representing the culture in a way where people can understand that, hey, listen, you, you could you could rap, you could be a kickboxer, you could, what else, what else do you want to do? You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's no limit to anything if, you know what I'm saying, if, you, if your mind is in the right place. Right, yeah, exactly. Amazing. Um, you did mention that your favorite method of consumption is rolling. Um, so walk us through what is like the I most ideal smoke session for you? Personally, um, the most ideal smoke session is having mad water, lots of water. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should have yeah. plenty of water around. You should be hella hydrated yeah. when you're smoking. Right. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, definitely take, take, you know what I'm saying, a couple of drops of a tincture, CBD tinctures, you know what I'm saying? Just so you can balance out 
all the CB, all the tea, tea that's getting ready to come in. And, um, you know, you also have some tea. I love to have tea before I smoke just to clear out the passageways and everything like that. Yeah. And then, um, you know, have, have some nice frontal, clean that off. You know what I'm saying? You know, put that in some boiling water, take it out, make sure it's nice and dry. Pull up, get a nice skinny piece, you know what I'm saying? Because I like a spliff, you know what I'm saying? Again, talk about that Rastafarian culture. Make mm -hmm. sure we got the king size papers, a good filter, you know what I'm saying? Probably gonna roll about a gram and a half. You got, and then they, hey, you start your day. That's, uh, that's it. It's very New York. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Either, either a really nice hot cup of tea or, you know what I'm saying, a good cup of coffee, you know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is with the coffee, you gotta be easy or else you're gonna have like those heart palpitations you gotta chill. So you just gotta have just the right amount of coffee and just the right amount of weed just to balance out all the activities in your body. <laughs> Any advice? Cause I've definitely been on the too much weed and coffee train and it's not, it's not a great ride. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That shit can lead to anxiety real quick. Yeah, definitely. No, no, no. Um, all right, last question. Tell us about the first time you've ever tried cannabis. Oh man, so my first time, um, I lied to my cousin. And um, one of my, so at the time I was actually living upstate and uh, my cousin came to visit one of my older cousins. And unfortunately my other cousin was actually away at the, he was in the Marines at the time. Mm -hmm. And everybody, all my cousins at the time were smoking. And um, I knew that um, I was gonna be the entertainment. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna get this dude high even though I don't know nothing about weed. I know that everybody around me has been smoking their five alone, but I don't know nothing about it. Right. But luckily for me, I was um, in the ninth grade and no, actually I was on the way to the ninth grade, but in eighth grade, I was playing for the varsity team. So I had the opportunity to know all the seniors and whatnot. So knowing all the seniors, I know everybody that smoked. Most of the people that I knew that played ball smoked. So it was like easy access. So I called up a couple of my buddies, had them come over and meet my cousin and stuff like that. They had, uh, picked us up came through with like a half ounce of weed. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Yeah. <laughs> so next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? They're rolling up. And um, I think my first time we ended up smoking like six or seven times. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was so I was so high. I, I went to sleep. I think I slept for like, like nine or 10 hours straight. <laughs> Yeah, and, that'll uh, do it. <laughs> oh yeah, and I and I remember what kind of weed it was too. It was hydro, and, and I like I still to this day I love hydro, and I like I wish it was more of a more in abundance. But oh man, I love hydro. <laughs> Classic, and now it's set a set a trend, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Ty. Well, that was uh, everything I had for you today. Um, you have been listening to the Flow State presented by the Bluntness. Thank you so much for joining us, Ty. Uh, everyone listening, feel free to give us a review, a like, or share with your followers. And for more bluntness in your life, you can find us on social media or directly at the source, thebluntness.com. Oh, and that does actually lead me to one final question for you. Where can we find you online? Find me at Daddy Shango, D-A-D-D-Y underscore Shango, S-H-A-N-G-O. And also you can find us at Rage and Release on Instagram and also rageandrelease.com as well. Perfect. Thank you so much.